share a few thoughts about DX and to bring stuff. Uh, it's the first time I've done this, so I had difficulty in trying to create a format as to what to cover. I'm a show and tell type guy, so I brought some stuff for show and tell, and I'll talk about everything here relates to DX. And a DX contact is you and your radio. It's going to be your radio, you're going to turn the dial, you're going to see if some guy say, CQ, this is W1AW listening. You're going to back, back W1AW, this is WA2AOY. And then he's going to come back to you, WA2AOY. Thank you for the call. Your signal report is 599. My name's Joe. I'm in Connecticut. Oh, go back to him. Fine business, Joe. The name here is Larry. Your signal report is 599, whatever the signal report is. I'm in New Jersey. You can either carry on or he'll say thanks for the contact. 73s. And you say 73s and you're clear. The other way we do DX is you call into the CQ. And I have a few innuendos I'll share with you, whether you like it or not, that's okay. Uh, you find a clear frequency. Let's see, you're on 14, somebody's talking about 14, uh, 20 meters. Clear. And you say, is this frequency in use? Then you say it one more time, is this frequency in use, please? Nothing heard. Then you say, nothing heard. Then I use the, hello, CQ, CQ, this, I say W-A-2-A-O-Y, listening, okay? Then you listen for somebody to call you. I like the hello, this is. Whenever you send your call signs, whenever, get in the habit of saying, this is. Because as soon as you say, this is, that guy knows the next thing out of your mouth is going to be your call sign so he can write it down. Okay? So now you've made a contact, now what do you do? Well, you go to your, uh, Logbooks. This is the logbook. This is the A R R L logbook. Let it guess. Well, you don't need a logbook, really. Right? And when you start your logbook, every single page, this is important, believe it or not, every single page you want to put on the top the year. Then you put down your radio. ICOM 7000. Oh, pardon me. Drake, MN7, that's the antenna tuner. And an inverted L, those are my antennas and my radio. And you put that on the top of the page. Every contact that you make, you put the date, the frequency, the mode, the power, the time, station worked, sent and received, comments, and where he's from. All right, where you made the contact. Now, if you're new in ham radio, or you've been around a while, and you're just starting getting active, DX is Connecticut. If you have not confirmed Connecticut, that's DX to you. You don't have to work, uh, is, you know, East Bib to be a DX station. So working uh, Delaware and Rhode Island is uh, not easy to do sometimes. So don't get confused with DX have to be 10,000 miles, okay? The other thing is, what kind of radio? You know, you could spend $10,000 on a radio today. <coughs> this is a certificate for DXCC, that's 100 countries, QRP. So I don't need a $10,000 radio. 
because I've worked DXCC with this. Three watts. You don't need a, a 1500 watts, you don't need 100. Preferably 100. All right, if you're looking for radio, you want to get 100 watts. But, and this lacks all the, uh, the stuff that you've, they've got on uh, radios today. This is all you need to work DXCC. Along with equipment, I'll get away from the equipment. So you have your log books. Then you want to keep track of what countries you worked. ARRL DXCC list. Whoops, a bad feed by the way. And you can treat track of every country you've worked, whether you sent him a card, whether you got a card back, and whether or not you sent it up to ARRL for credit. This is the whole thing right here. This is 40 years of stuff. Right there. You don't need a computer. You want a computer, but you don't have to have some logging program or some sophisticated uh, equipment to work DXCC. This is good enough. The other thing which makes it interesting in is another item, the World Atlas. You want this in your shack. You worked in Dora. Where's Endora? Nobody knows where Endora is. But I do because I've worked in Endora and I've looked out up here. It's between uh, uh, France and. Uh, huh? Uh, France and Switzerland. I think it's France and. Uh, Spain. Spain. Spain, exactly. But you can sit there and just look at this. <coughs> yeah, there's Endora right there. Right? Northern coast of Spain and France. Now you can go out on your front porch and look up the street, down the street, and say, you know something, I'm the only guy that knows where Andorra is. <laughs> <laughs> All right? <clears throat> so this is a very good item you want to get. Back in the old days, this one was for New York specifically, but if you wanted to beam your antenna towards uh, a Swazi land, well, you'd put it at 101 degrees. This is how we used to calculate that. We have these little books. Today, if you go on QRZ, there's a hundred different ways you can get this online. So these are all pertinent to working DX and DXEC. <coughs> you want to be familiar with your frequency allocations, okay? This is the piece of paper, and they just had last month's QST had a copy of this in it for us. And then we have to know how to look at this. What the heck is this? It will take you a long time to comprehend this if you haven't comprehended it also. It gives you the band and the frequency. It tells you where it can operate as a general, as a technician, uh, or, or an extra. That tells, this is where you find out where you're allowed to operate. And today we have new hams, technicians, and they can work on voice first time. Now the guy's a technician, he's yellow, he can operate from 28.3 to 28.5 on the 10 meter band. Okay. Well, he needs a 10 meter antenna. Well, now you can share with him how do you calculate, how do you make a 10 meter dipole? Well, it's real simple over here. You take 2468, 468, divide 28.4 into it, and it's 16 and a half feet. Okay, but when you tell a guy a dipole 16 and a half feet, it's still a snuffleupagus to him. He don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> You know what I mean? So, I brought along a 10 meter dipole. <laughs> Want to grab that hang on over there? Pull that over there. This is a 10 meter dipole, 16 and a half feet long, ballpark, with a wire coming down here. 
And on Portable Day, three, four years ago, I worked New Zealand with this antenna with 25 watts in a park. So you don't need, uh, you know, a four element uh, Yagi and a kilowatt. So 25 watts in a dipole, <coughs> I've worked Australia. I mean, New Zealand at this particular rate. But, okay? So when you're talking to young guys, new guys, you, you have to try and get this to them. Because I didn't know. I was a ham, and I had a wire laying up in the attic as an antenna. I didn't know anything about it. Uh, an antenna. I, uh, I got a wire. I put the wire up in the antenna, up in the attic. That was it. So, uh, yeah, and I'll, go, I'll put this over here. So, oh, oh, I got this down pat. You see, if you take that and go right around like that a couple times, good. See that? So part of our job is being a ham. If you're a ham three days and the guy's been a ham two days, you're his Elmer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you got to try and think at the low level because... Believe me, it's there. Uh, so we uh, touch on the logbook, but as you progress, I just want to look, somebody worked a lot of stations. You can work single side bed. The single side bed. New Zealand, Hawaii, Argentina, Hawaii, Uruguay, Australia, Ecuador, Barbados, Bahamas, Germany, on and on and on. And that's all in one day. Okay? That's GX, 100 watts. And that was on 10 meters, 20 meters, 160 meters, and 15 meters. Okay, so have fun. Then we have CW. You want to do, well, you see, I can't tell you you want to get involved with CW. Because when we got licenses initially, we had to do five words a minute, 13, and then 20 words a minute. Required. And because that was required, hundreds of thousands of people never got their license. And the old timers, when they reduced and then got rid of the requirement for CW, we thought that was terrible. Well, it turns out it's the best thing they ever did. Because now we're getting 30,000 hams, new hams, who would not have been a ham if he had to do five words a minute. And we're finding out people coming in, getting uh, their license, two, three, four, five years later, they get interested in CW. And CW is a great part of this hobby. Where's my thing? You've all heard of this uh, FT8 stuff. Well, you gotta watch your attitude. Forty years ago, oh, those digital people, you know what I mean? Uh, so, coffee time, a guy talked me into this FT8 thing. So I had to figure out how to download M, N, MM, M1M or something, plus the, the logging program. Two months to figure out how to download that. <laughs> then, oh, then you have to get Logbook of the World. That's another two months. Then, how do you upload what you put into the logging program up to LOTW? That was another two months. I'm down there in the shack yelling and screaming and hollering, you know. I'm making the contacts, but trying to get into LOTW took me a while to learn. LOTW, no, that's for, that's for high-tech guys, you know. You know, I can't get involved with that. L-O-T-W is the greatest thing since sliced bread. If you're going to make contacts, you're going to do DX work, make a few contacts overseas, it'll save you over $1,000 over the years, if not $2,000, okay, for exchanging your QSL contacts. I'll show you why, now that I'm on that. So, uh, where's my thing? Yeah, I get it. <coughs> so if you make a contact with a guy overseas, 
and you check your book, is in Australia, and you have not confirmed Australia, but you're trying to get 100 countries confirmed, well, you have to buy the envelope, you have to stamp your name and address on the return envelope, $3, postage, send it to New Zealand or wherever, and here it comes back. And that's how you get a card from New Zealand. And to get your DXCC, you collect a hundred of these, okay? You bring them up to Newington, Connecticut, and you get a certificate, DXCC. Well, how long did it take me to get a DXCC? I checked it. 17 years it took me to get DXCC. Why? Because I thought it was impossible. How in the world are you going to work 100 countries? So, what I did was just made my little contacts, made my little contacts, sent the cards out, and son of a gun, after 17 years, I get my DXCC certificate. What does it typically take now? I mean, if you look around other people, how many years? I got here, I worked 85 on the weekend. All right? But I had another bad attitude. Contest, oh, those contest people, I'm not a contest person. If there was a contest on the weekend, I wouldn't be on the radio because those people were on the radio. Well, that's how you don't work DXCC, sitting, uh, you know, doing something other than that. So you do not have to be a contester to work in the contest and make contacts. Took me 35 years to figure that out. All right? You follow me? Oh, there's a contest. Oh, man, I get it. How many are worried about points? Forget the points. No stress. Just make the contact. And then you do your business. So uh, we did that. Oops. Question in regards to the card: Is it mandatory you have to send a card? You know the... no. <clears throat> Initially, that's the only way you can get a card. Mm -hmm. Today, you make the contact. Okay. Oh. You put it in your logging program, every contact you make goes into N1MM Plus or whatever you got, and then you upload it to LOTW, Logbook of the World, and if that guy who made a contact with you also uploaded it to LOTW, it will show up as a QSL. In other words, when you load up, it's a QSO, you made a QSO. But these are QSL cards, and when he uploads it to LOTW, that becomes a QSL. Now, it's better than a card, because you've been waiting three months, you finally get your card here, and the guy's got the wrong date, he's got the wrong call sign on the card, he's got maybe the wrong frequency on the card, there's three or four different possibilities to get the card and it's not accepted by ARRL, okay? But getting the card's cool. Yeah. Let's, get, let's get the cool factor down. I mean, this is the mystique of amateur radio is having a bunch of QSL cards. When it shows up on LOTW as a QSL, there's no mistake. Newington will accept that, period. They don't, if it shows up as a QSL, you get into it. That's it, it's done. They don't have to check anything on the card, all right? So this will cost me an envelope, a stamp, $3, and now listen guys, you want to get your QSL cards, and you want to send cash, and there's only one way you want to send cash for your QSL card, for your DX company, contact. Come Thanksgiving, you go down to your bank. Where's the assistant manager, please? Hi, do you have any brand spanking new $1 bills right from the, uh, who makes the money? I guess with an R. <laughs> the reserve, the Federal Reserve. I don't know. They will order these between 
Thanksgiving. See the pause? Did I tell you about the pause, huh? Yep. <laughs> Inside joke. They will order some of those between Thanksgiving and Christmas because Grandma wants some single dollar bills to give to the grandkids. All right? So you let him know, or her know, you want at least 100 or 200 brand new ones. Why? Because if you send a QSL card to a guy in Egypt, With a dollar bill that looks like this, and he goes down to the bank and tries to get Egyptian money, they will not accept this. They only deal with fresh, brand new money. So you want to send everybody overseas brand new dollar bills. That's why you do that. And you've got to have them ahead of time, you go down there. So everything's DX related. $100 bills, brand spanking new. Get 100 at a time, if not 200 And then you'll be set for a year or two. All right? Back to uh, DXCC. Oh, a comment? Yes. What I normally do is I hide the money so that it can't be seen through the outer envelope. That's correct. Because a lot of foreign countries are very corrupt. And, well, and many times you won't get anything back, particularly for South Africa. Oh, all over the world they have this trouble. <laughs> yeah. The post office people will steal the mail. Steal, yeah. uh, they don't have to see the money inside. What are they looking for? Call signs. A call sign on the envelope. Well, that's why I never put it down. Okay, so, so now at long last, I got a stamp with no, I mean, it's, I did it. No call sign on the return envelope, all right? Yeah. Or the or the or you don't put his call sign on his envelope. Right. Oh don't forget, if a guy can get three dollars in some place in Africa, you know, he can he, he, he can eat for two weeks. Well that's you follow me? You can't blame the guys. So this was why uh, L O T W is a big help. <laughs> also, guys. You've made your DX contact now. You worked uh, East Jabib, and uh, you want to send him a card. So now you have to go and make up QSL cards. Make sure you talk to people about making up your QSL card. It has to have certain information. Number one, it needs your entity. Do you know what our entity is? United States of America. That's an entity. Preferably you put in the state because people are collecting worked old states. You want the Bergen County because people County. collect work, work counties. And now we have to put in FN20 because grid squares, people collect the grid squares. Uh, you want to have zone, we're in zone 5 here, C key zone, you want that there because of worked old zones. You know how want to be, you want to talk, make sure you talk to people to show you what to put here. <coughs> Confirming QSO with his goal sign. On the date, now, like today is 9 14? Correct. Yep. Yeah. Well, if we were in, you, in Europe, it's 14 9. 9. Mm -hmm. Okay? Well, how do you solve that problem? You feel me? If you say, if you put down 3-9, it was 9-3, and he checks the logbook to find you in his logbook so he can confirm the card that you sent, he can't find you. So, that's why we put the date, the day, the month, and the year right there so he knows what's what. I'm a little old-fashioned, so on the month, I still use the Roman numeral. Oh, what's the Roman numeral? You young guys here, they know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Do you? <clears throat> what's the Roman numeral for nine? Nine? Yeah. Uh, IX. IX. right there. Do I fool him in? No. So you got to have that there. <clears throat> UTC, which is what? Universal, Universal time. Coordinated Time. Why do they have it UTC and not e UCT is beyond me, but that's anyway, French. that's the deal. That's the French standard. 
standards in the French uh, are, are do in it. French. Frogs do everything backwards. Okay, anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> what country is on UTC 365 days a year? None. None. England. England. Well, no. Well, England has daylight savings time. Oh, that's right. That's right. Are you glad you come here tonight? Spain? Iceland and Monrovia. <laughs> Iceland and Monrovia are no, on UTC 20, 365 days. You want a clock <laughs> in your shack that has UTC and the date of UTC. So it's what time is it here? 8 30. All right. And what's the date? Month 15. What time is it in UTC? Zero, it's the zero, 15th. Zero, zero, twenty six. It's 0020, the 15th. All right? <coughs> you have to put the date, the month, and the day, UTC. You see, I have to apologize. I spent, I spent 40 years working with UTC. So when I look at, so, so I look at the clock, oh, it's, it's 2018. Then you know, everybody says, well, it's eight, 18 plus, my half. Four or five, they, they got to figure it out, all right? So just because of uh, osmosis, it's easy for me, and I have to realize it's, uh, it's, a, it's a snuffleupagus for everybody else. Uh, so uh, now, you're a ham, you're making these DX contacts, you know? Son of a gun, what's this? Stamps. I can read it. I don't know where that one's from. That was from Spain. Russia. Spain. Russia again. <coughs> Moldova. Who knows where Moldova is? You look at your atlas and you'll find Moldova. Okay? The atlas is very, it's about 12 bucks, very good. So all of a sudden, I had, a, I had an old girlfriend, and she had a friend, and he collected stamps, so I would give him the stamps. I don't know if he had many stamp collectors anymore, but if you know somebody, don't give him the whole bag. He may not appreciate it, all right? So you give him a few, if he likes them, you give him a few. So this is part of the mystique of amateur radio. You wind up with bags full of stamps. Pretty cool. For some. Money. Now, you can mail your QSL card. Or you can send your QSL cards via the Bureau. You don't know how that. You got the Bureau, and then this, this is a pack. These are cards that are going out. But I'm not sending three, three bucks for each card. I'm sending it up to ARRL in Newington, Connecticut. $1.15 per ounce plus a $7 bill. And you, what you do is you save them up. And you get in your car. And you go up to Newington, Connecticut. Here are my QSL cards. Pay whatever they want. But then at 10 o'clock, you can go over to W1AW. You've heard of W1AW? I got it up here somewhere. W1AW. And in your QST, you ever see the magazines? You get that brick building with the little round window in it? You know what I'm talking about? You remember QRO? Uh, yeah? I haven't been there. No? Have you, are you a member? Yes. Good. You can go up there, bring your license. And they have these studios. Sit you down, and you tell them, well, I'd like to go on uh, 20 meters, uh, point the beam uh, southwest. And he'll set you all up, and then you sit down there, and you say, <coughs> get the vibrato going, you know, you know what? Yeah, yeah, no, 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 you want to get it, get the, Lab from the Labanza. You want to say, is this frequency in use? Is this frequency in use, please? Nothing heard. Hello. This is 
W1 A W whiskey alpha one alpha whiskey and then you emphasize with Newington, Connecticut. Well, you will be answered, and they'll put it on the uh, what's what are they called? The cluster. Put them on the clusters, yeah. and uh, you can work those uh, contacts all over, mostly in the United States. You want because a lot of guys have never worked W1AW, which is in Newington, Connecticut, and they send out the bulletins, they send out the code practice, all sorts of stuff, and they want a card. And now you're operating W1AW. How cool is that? It's cool to me. It's cool to me, I'll tell you. So that's available to us because we're amateur radio operators. In my case, I uh, spent some time in a place called Chagos Archipelago. Not many people know where Chagos Archipelago is. Diego Garcia. It's in the South Indian Ocean. Correct. And I was there four times and made about 12,000 contacts. So, I had to have my VQ9LW card made up. What mode? What, what, what mode? Good question. I started off <coughs> with voice. I, good question. I'm not an excellent operator. I'm an okay operator. You follow me? And here I am on the DX expedition. With, uh, what's going on? So I started with voice. And over there, they're all foreigners call. Very few stateside calls. And you have all these accents. And it was extremely difficult to pick out the guy's accent. And it was not educated or experienced enough to work split. I didn't know about split. And so I went to CW, and CW doesn't have an accent. It's all the same, whether I'm copying a Russian, a Jap, or a Greek, or some sort of African guy, the code is the code. You can't, there's no accent on CW. And I found that CW gave me less stress. Trying to pick out all these call signs all these accents was very stressful, and I solved that problem with going to uh, with uh, CW. What's this say? QSL stuff, Wayne. Well, I guess I opened that up. Oh, okay. So now you try to reduce the stress from this. This is a great hobby, by the way. I've learned more in the last six years. It's unbelievable. It's fun. I hang out with guys at the club. Barra, Fairlawn, talk about stuff. There's a lot of smart guys around. All right? And you find a guy who knows stuff and you just hang out with him and talk with him. You don't want to discuss politics and religion at the meeting, you know what I mean? <laughs> you talk about DX and stuff. All right? Just run the tip you off. So, I'm going to give you a tip. You've made your DX contacts. What about this QSLing? You have sent the QSL cards to the guys you need. Then you get cards in the mail from the Bureau. Where is the cards from the computer? I got them here somewhere. You get an envelope, you know, <coughs> ten cards. They want your card. Well, you don't need their card. Do you follow me? But we do the right thing. We acknowledge that contact. So we have to take their contact, we have to go through the whole logbook, find the contact, okay. <coughs> so I saw how to reduce all the anxiety out of that. If you make the contact, you fill out a card and send it by the bureau. Everyone. And your job is done. Follow me? 
You don't have to wonder, no anxiety, just make out a card and send it up or bring it up to uh, ARRL and you're done. And it's not that you're done, it takes all the anxiety out of it, right? Took me 40 years to figure that out. <coughs> all right? So let's see. All right, so you've got yourself a radio. Between your radio and the antenna, you have an antenna tuner. This is a little MFJ. This is an antenna tuner. And when you figure out, you go on each, each frequency, you figure out where the knobs gives you the minimum SWR, the minimum short standing, standing, standing wave. wave line. You make that note. And then you create a book. Pick them up here later. And here's the book. All the frequency was all. You follow me? A little angle on this, but we got it done. So you want that. You need a microphone. Some of you probably have never held a key in your hand. <laughs> that is a Speedex. I sailed in the Merchant Marine, and they got rid of the sparks, you know, they, get, they do everything by uh, satellite email, and it, just tearing out the radio rooms, and I, I got that key. This is a Nazi one. This is Germany, 1941. I just got this today. Uh, a guy asked me to bring it to show that. That's another telegraph key. Now, so you're going to work the X. So, may I suggest that you consider learning the Morse code? Not you got to learn the Morse code. May I suggest you consider learning the Morse code? Because it's fun. All right? So this book just came out. See all these keys here? Whose hands are those? They look familiar. Right here. <clears throat> Some guy was, I was showing these keys off. Some guy ran and took a, took a, this happened a couple years ago. I ran across the magazine. I'm on the front page, huh? <laughs> Who knew? I wanted to be ha a ham since the time I was 11. Well, how do you do that? I had two guys in their neighborhood. I'd go over there and look at the stuff. Look at this, antennas. My buddy is in Westwood, Marsh's father. But nobody said, hey, Larry, you know, you can do this and how you do it. At age 33, I'm in uh, Heathkit. Looking at all this stuff, you know. I said, how do you do this? The guy says, oh, <clears throat> I give the test. What test? I didn't know you had to take a test. So if you got guys that are, you're trying to interest in ham radio, work DX, let them know you got to take the test, get the book for them. All right? The next book you want to get after you get your license, you get the operating manual. Then you go from there. Uh, so I'm supposed to talk about these. This has worked all continents. A lot of people don't know what continents we have in ham radio. North America, South America, Europe, Africa, Asia, and what's the next one? Oceania. Oceania. Antarctica is a continent, but it's not considered a continent for ham radio because many countries are ready. So this is worked all continents. The next one, DX here again, because Minnesota is a DX contact to you. If you haven't got the card from Minnesota, that's DX. So then you work on work all states. You confirm all 50 states. In this case, I confirm all 50 states on five different <coughs> bands and you get the five band DXCC. This one here was worked 100 entities using low power. This one here, you work 100 entities, 100 countries on five <coughs> different bands. Specifically <coughs> 10, 15, 20, and 8. This is a tough one, guys. 
That one's worked all states. That one's five man worked all states. You can work DXCC and not work all zones. But this is worked all zones. Pardon me, worked all zones. There's 40 zones. Took me 42 years to work 40 zones. All right? Cool. But you can get five band DXCC and not work 40 zones. You can work 40 zones and not work five band DXCC. All right, so everyone's different. This is a new one, a brand new one. <coughs> this is DX, <coughs> and they want to promote Logbook of the World. So you have to confirm virtual states using CW, Morse code, digital, and phone. However, you have to confirm it using LOTW. And out of 3 million hams around the world, 2,000 have this. All right. Out of 3 million hams around the world, 1,900 have this. Three million hams around the world, 6,000 have this. I'm trying to promote this, you know. Now, I'm not blowing smoke anywhere near me. I'm talking to you guys. Got it? Five band work to all states. Only 2,400. You have more guys working five band DXCC then five band worked all states. Who knew? So there's all sorts of chances to be recognized. Worked all states, worked a hundred countries, worked all continents, and you get a little, you know, when was the last time you bought, you bought a certificate? <coughs> you certificate? You go get your own damn certificate down. <laughs> <laughs> All right? You don't need the boards. Also, in your shack, well, I'm going to, I don't want to go too long. I'm going to, I don't know how far you traveled to get here tonight, or how long it took to get it, but I'm going to make it worth your trip. Ready? What kind of antenna do I have? A dipole, an end fed wire. An off center fed dipole, a vertical, a beam. Well, you need a little bit of everything. I'm going to talk to you about a ground mounted vertical. When I was trying to get this one, 5 pm worked all states, I could not get Hawaii on 80 meters. Well, I need a vertical, I says. All right, get the vertical. I'll read up on it. Well, you have to put down radios. Radios. I don't know what radios are. So this question will show you what radios are. How many radios? What size of wire? <coughs> what type of wire? And how long should they be? Here are the answers. Now you're going to get lots of guys that will criticize, condemn, and complain about these answers because they're not willing to do it. All right? That's why they do that. So you want 120 radials, number 10 bare copper wire, buried a couple inches deep, as long as practical. 120 radials, can I use 60? Yes. Can I use 30? Yes. Can I use 15? Yes. How many radials do you want? I want 20. That's the answer to the question. What kind of wire? <coughs> Number 10, why number 10? Well, if you go down to Meadowlands, the AM stations, what kind of wire do you think they lay their radios out with? Number 10, bare copper wire. Well, that's a good start. Can I use 12? Yes. Can I use 14? Yes. Can I use 18? Yes. Can I use 22? Yes. What size wire do you want to use? Number 10. That's what you want. This is a tough question. I spent years, years, talking to them, 
<coughs> Bare copper wire or insulated wire? Oh, that's a tough one. Long story short, you want bare copper wire. Well, the, the, the response is, the response is, we cannot determine any difference with a insulated wire compared to a bare copper wire. So what's the standard? Bare copper wire. Hey, 20 years I spent trying to figure that out. The other thing is, as long as practical, what's the distance between my patio and the big oak tree? 50 feet. Well, I put the antenna halfway between, so my radials are going to be 25 feet long. 25 times 120 is how many feet? 6,000, uh, pardon me, 3,000 feet, a half a mile wide, 3,000 feet. All right. This is why you talk to people before you go doing something off on your own. I, I can afford 3,000 feet of wire. They say you want your radials to be as long as practical and the longer the better. Beware, be, don't get hung up on longer the better, which is true. But not if you compromise the number of wires. So here's your choice. I can have 125, 120 wires only a 25 feet long. Or I can reduce that to 60 wires, but now make them all 50 feet long. Which way do you want to go? You want the 120 because you want as much copper around the base. <coughs> you want the density of your radials to be close in. So forget the length, use the 120, as many as you can. Now, this is a radio <coughs> plate. This goes underneath a vertical antenna. And this has got uh, 24 uh, lugs here. And I made this, um, you know, I have a long, a lot of time where I can't do anything. Every once in a while I have a moment. So now I have five wires attached to each of 24 lugs. 120. That's what that looks like. It's going to be worth the trip, guys. Well, i got to get these in order, you know. No. I just had these made up for tonight, by the way. I'll get them in order. Because that's the fun of it. All right, we got Ron. We got the job done. We got a half a mile of wire, how to bury them, and the finished product. So, I spent oh, years. How am I going to bury 120 radials? I spent two years going around to uh, 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 hardware stores buying trinkets and wheels and shovels and widgets and wadgets. And, you know, how, how am I going to dig a trench 25 feet long? 120 of them. <coughs> Here's the answer. This is Ron, my buddy. What's he, what's he operating? A machine. A machine. <laughs> <laughs> That's a rototiller. <laughs> hey, Ron, can you come up here? Yeah, I can do that. That's my buddy Ron and the rotor tiller. Okay? So Ron, that's my buddy Ron. <laughs> and he wrote rotor tills a circle, 50 feet diameter, all the way around the antenna. 
And that's what it looks like. <clears throat> wow. And I show this to people. Do you know what the response is? You must be single. Crazy? Yes. <laughs> What's my wife going to say? <laughs> no. Question. I, that, that, <laughs> I can't do that because what my wife is going to say. That's why they don't do this. All right? They're trying to dig a trench for the... So then you have to make up 25 radials, 25 feet long, 120 right, 25 feet long in groups of five, which is on the uh, thing. And this is what a half a mile of wire looks like. This is DX related, guys. The only reason I did this, I wanted to work Hawaii on 80 meters. <laughs> There's no logic to being a ham radio operator. It's all, all emotional. <laughs> all right? So that's your, hundred, that's your half a mile of wire. This one shows how you bury the radios. See the trench? See the wire in the trench? On the Lamax, this is what you want. <laughs> when you rotate it, you stick this in, you put the wire, you have one guy hold the wire, and you go brrrr, and you got your trench. Take you five minutes to dig a trench. If you didn't rotate it, take you probably an hour and a half to dig a trench 25 feet long. So that's what I used. Took me a while to figure that out. And this would be the finished product. Very few people have ever seen 120 radios. Wow. Is a picture worth a thousand words? Mm -hmm. I'm going to pass these around and you can have fun with them. There's five of them. One, two, three, four, so I got four. Fifth is here. I have to ask you, did you work uh, Hawaii on 80 meters? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You don't know how good a question that is. <laughs> so I got it up. The big contest is on, man. Now I've got to get a three o'clock in. <laughs> Slept through the first night of the contest. <laughs> Son of a gun. I worked him the second night. And I look back. He's got this address. Ah, I worked this guy before and I found an old card with an address on it. Is I'm going to send it to that address. I'm, I'm on the inside. I'm going to send it to this address. Big envelope. I don't know, I don't know. Big envelope. I send it out there. Weeks goes by. Months go by. I don't get my card. The phone rings. And it's this guy. He's in Washington, D.C. He says, did you send me a QSL card? I'm like, yeah, yeah, that was me. I'm just patient. So, you sent it to an address that's on the top of some mountain in Hawaii. And my neighbor was driving by, he saw the, uh, the, the thingamajig up on the, on, the, on, the, on the mailbox, he pulled it out, and he called him. And that's, that's how I got the card. Good question. <laughs> I never worked the guy. Good question. How many bands does your uh, vertical cover? Eight plus, plus 160. 10 through 80, plus you had 160. Okay. Good, good, good uh, SWR on all the... Uh... Oh, yeah. yeah. And if you don't like with, the... With, with the tuner, yeah. With or without the tuner. Okay. But you can, you, uh, you can move around a little more with the tuner. So I did the, uh, the photographs with that. I wanted to make sure. Very few people have seen a photograph of 120 radians, believe it or not. In your shack, you want to have a dummy load, seeing that you're working DX, and you're going to be up in the middle of the night sometimes, you will break rule three. Rule three is don't work tired. Don't be on the radio tired because you're going to push the wrong button and you're going to send 100 watts into Neverland and your radio's going to fail. So if you have any connections 
on the back of your radio, any connections on the back of your antenna tuner, you put a dummy load on each one. Good. Well, why do I don't have to? It's good amateur practice. That's the answer you give The other way is, if you're going to tune up an antenna or eight bands, instead of putting the key down and tuning, and tuning the antenna tuner, you can hook your antenna tuner to this. And you can adjust your settings to minimum SWR here, instead of smoking your finals. Okay, the, so eventually you want the antenna tuner if you're going to work the X. Uh, a lot of guys don't know what a meter is. This is Aunt Emma's yard stick. And this is a meter stick. So there's a, a yard and a meter. Now when you go on 20, you got your new license, you're running a 28400, you're running a, a 28400, your electricity is going off your tender, at what speed does the energy leave your antenna? Speed of light. The speed of light. All right. And your, if you're operating 10 meters, your waves are going 28, 28,400 a second. Or is it 28 million? 28 million. Huh? 28 million. 28 million, okay. No. It vibrates 28 million times a second. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? And how far does that energy go <coughs> leaving your antenna in the length of time it takes to make one cycle? 10 meters. 10 meters. That's why they call it a 10 meter band. If you're working, you got your new technician license, you're running 10 meters, it's that's how they come up with 10 meters. Okay? You're in on that? 35 years before I figured that out. Nobody told me that. I can remember the day I figured it out. I thought I was a genius. <laughs> All right? What else we got here? Now, guys, you want to do DX? You're going to have a radio more sophisticated than this. Okay, no matter what you do. How do you learn how to use your radio? You want to work the X. You go to, where is it? I don't have my glasses on here. To 1.8025 megahertz, 160 meter band. And you have, you remember ARRL, so you get the QST, that will give you the times that they send the code practice. Well, I don't know the code. You don't have to know the code. They're sending code at 5, 7 and a half, 10, 13, 15, and 2. It doesn't make a difference. They're just sending the signal. You don't have to copy the code. You listen to it. And then, with your radio, while that's playing, you play for two hours. You can fool around with your AF gain, audio frequency gain, your RF gain, your squelch. I don't know what that word is, but that too. <laughs> you learn how to use your passband tuning, your memories, RIT, the, tw the twin, the twin passband tuning, the memory groups, multifunction keys, the manual nudge. Do you have a minute? Stand up. Right? Read this aloud. What's that say back there? You left the notch filter where? You left the notch filter where? You know what that means? When you're fooling around with your notch filter and you notch somebody out, and then you change frequency, and you're trying to tune another guy in, and your notch filter's engaged. When you're finished using the notch filter, make sure you turn it off. That's what that's all about. 
uh, your noise blanker, your noise reduction, the auto notch filter. You have all sorts of things that are adjustable on your radio. You go to 160 meters, W1, it comes in booming here, 7 o'clock at night, 4 p.m. The, win the winter's coming, 4 p.m. They'll be on for two hours, two hours, two hours, be on there. That's how you learn how to use your radio without having to try and learn how to use the radio when you're making a contact. You wish? All right. So we did this and this. Uh, you want a, you want a, a, a watt meter in your, in your shack. You want the dummy load. You want the antenna analyzer. You got your log books. You got your money. You got your keys. You got your books. You got your certificates. <coughs> Uh, I, I know I'm going to forget something. Don't forget this simple thing. And uh, this is invaluable over the years. All right. <coughs> Am I done? What else? Any question? Have fun. Ham radio is cool. Why am I a ham radio operator? I want to save lives. Ah, you know, you, you, you think it's cool. Somewhere you thought it was cool. And that's why we're here. Right away. Something about it was cool. Uh, hey, merci beaucoup. A certificate of achievement, or a certificate of something, of appreciation. When was the last time your boss gave you a certificate of appreciation? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.